Do you love it when yeah. you're like doing pre-session songs or you're prepping for a class and the song ends right on time like it was totally intentional? Yeah, that's what just happened. It was totally intentional. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. Um, good afternoon. Are we in afternoon? Yes, correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Calhoun and this is Kyle Brumbaugh and I'm going to give you a real quick and fast, hopefully 30 seconds or less, uh, introduction. I was a previous English, high school English teacher and then high school uh, an assistant principal and then a middle school assistant principal. I now work at a county office supporting 30-some districts uh, in the Silicon Valley, um, integrating technology both for administrators as well as teachers, office staff, whoever wants to hear what I have to say, I just talk and they listen. Um, and Kyle, background? Um, my name is Kyle Brumbaugh. I've done just about every job that you can do in educational technology. I've been a teacher. Um, I taught computer repair, computer networking. I taught social science, physical education. I was a vice principal at a high school. I was a director of technology. And now I'm recently kind of coming back full circle, and I will be an educational technologist at a school in San Jose. Yay. So um, this is our resource site, if you haven't already gone there. Uh, some of you that came a little bit early and already went there and you went through all of our slides, thank you very much. It's been great having you. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally excited that you're here because if you went through, then you did some pre-learning, right? And you, you're prepared now for the speed at which we will cover this information because it is at a quite quick clip. Um, but we have some support in place to uh, facilitate your learning. And not the least of which is this particular site, which has our slide deck, as well as on the top, you've got more resources, um, other stuff that we may or may not get time to cover, as well as our contact information on that last slide. So if you're on Twitter, um, Kyle is like 90 people away from 1,000 followers. So if we could help that, that would be great. <laughs> um, and other than that, um, all our contact information is there. Um, so in order to also facilitate this process, now I'm going to go away from this particular, no, actually I'm not going away from, haha, <laughs> look at that. Um, in addition, if you would like to participate in the back channel, and Twitter's not your thing, um, we can talk later. Um, but today's meet is over here on the right hand side, and we're going to have that running. And so the way that Kyle and I are going to kind of manage this, um, this learning experience is we're going to go through a series of uh, applications and systems and ways that he and I have streamlined our own workflows because we get lots and lots of information and how do we filter that and curate it and make it as meaningful as possible. And um, what we'll do is as we go through each of the different apps, one of us is going to be on the Today's Meet. And so if you have questions, then the other person will be presenting the information and then the other person will be managing the Today's Meet. Um, towards the end of this, after we go through all the different apps, there will be a period of time where we put out a Google form to all of you and say, what do you want of the, you know, 10 or however many apps that we have covered? Um, and it's not just apps as in mobile apps. I'm using that term generically. Um, which ones do you want us to do more of a deep dive into? And we're going to spend time doing more of a deep dive into two of all of the different applications that we cover with you based on your live Results. input. Yeah. Right. So that being said, shall okay. we kick it off? So when we interact with digital technologies and we have all of the <gasps> things, oh, hello. Keep going. Um, the things that we end up doing is that sometimes you start to feel like this, is that you have this mass of information, this, this fire hydrant worth of information coming at you, and how best do you handle that? Because you cannot consume all of it and you kind of get this kind of crushing flow down on top of you and you want to be able to sift and kind of filter out the noise. So you need to manage it kind of, which is the next slide. Uh oh. Here, you want that? Yep. Is like this. So this is a Vegas buffet. And we've all been to Vegas or you've at least heard of Vegas, right? And all the buffets and all the things you eat there. So if you try to eat everything at the buffet, what's going to happen? <laughs> You're going to get sick. But how do you manage your food at a Vegas buffet? You take your first plate and you put a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of something else and you'll go back to your table and 
you'll eat a bite of one thing and say, you know what, I really don't like that. Are you going to eat any more of it? Nope. You're going to eat something else in your plate? I really like that. So what are you going to do? At the end, you may go back and get a second plate and do what? Get the stuff that you like and maybe one or two other things that look nice and then go back to your table again. You handle your digital life and your digital workflow the same way. Because not everyone is going to manage their digital workflow the same way. You need to find the applications that work best for you, use those applications, and then try to add on one or two others every so often that may enhance the things that you're already doing with the tools that you have. And so we'll now move forward. Is it my turn? Your turn. I like today's me. I like talking with the people. Okay, I know. They're your peeps. Well, uh, oh, you got they're the peeps. our peeps. Okay, they're our peeps. They're collective peeps. Pe okay. Is that okay? Or does that feel too possessive? We don't know each other that well yet. Yeah. Okay. Can um, you be our peeps? Yes? Will you be our peeps for will the next hour? Will you be our hour? peeps at least for the next hour? Thank you. Okay. Okay, so, <laughs> um, so let's talk about browsers for a second because... At your baseline, when you're talking about administrative work and when you're talking about streamlining any sort of educational flow, um, we have active choices we make, and then we have the choices that are provided to us <laughs> under the guise of choices. Um, so you've got Chrome, you've got Firefox, you've got Safari, and then you have Internet Explorer. Okay, let me put it this way. Just let you think about that for a second. So um, a couple things that I want to show you um, in regards to Chrome. Uh, two things. Actually, I'm going to tell you about them, and then uh, going, doing more of a deep dive into browsers will be an option later, okay? But the reason I feel this way, and, and it's not that I, I'm a Firefox hater. I mean, I, there's a kid wearing a Firefox tail. I might question him about it, but, you know, I wouldn't beat him up. Um, and... I go back and forth between Chrome and Firefox, um, depending on whatever my needs are. Particularly the reason I use Chrome is because of the ability to access all of my bookmarks, not just my bookmarks, but also whatever tabs I have open on any device. So if I have tabs open on my home computer and I'm logged into Chrome, I can access those same tabs from my iPad, from my Android tablet, from my PC, anywhere else that I am. Um, and the ability to personalize. One of the things that I love to do on my, uh, when I'm using Chrome is in my settings, I go through and actually set up how I can instantly search by just pressing one key. So, for instance, if I'm looking for something on YouTube, all I have to do in the address bar, because this is how I've set it up, is go YT, baby's crying whatever, baby's laughing, babies, and that will instantly search on YouTube, baby's laughing for me. If you want to learn how to do that more, then we can do a deep dive into that. But those are some of the capabilities of Chrome and the ability to integrate with Google Apps for Ed, which is a powerful collaborative tool, um, which Kyle will go into a little bit more later. How many of you, um, before we go too much more into this, how many of you are K K5, K6, or up to age 10 or 11. Okay, how many of you are middle school? 6, 8-ish. And 9, 12? Any higher ed? Any companies? Okay, nonprofits. And everybody else who is really, really special in their own rights. That's everybody. Come on. You love it. Good, good. Um, how many of you use Evernote? Great. Good. How many of you have ever played with Skitch at all? A little bit. Wow. Okay. So Evernote allows you, many of you know what the power of Evernote is. I'm going to show you um, one of my favorite, momentarily. Pull this up. And this is going to work like a charm because it's technology. Yes. <laughs> Outstanding. Um, so one of the things that I really, really enjoy about, about Evernote, for instance, is my ability to share uh, particular 
notes with anyone, as well as include the links. And then at the very bottom, I can include also particular files. In addition to that, I always used Evernote um, in all of my meetings, whether it was an IEP or anything, because I could take the audio file and just record, take my notes, take pictures, and it all goes in the same piece of information. I don't even want to call it a file because it's a compilation of files, you know. Um, now, in addition to that, Evernote has a whole bunch of addendum apps. If we are going to talk about specifically iOS apps or Android apps for iOS, um, they have a great app called Evernote Peak, which allows you to create a folder in Evernote that is essentially flashcards. And then if you have a smart cover for your iPad, you flip up one part, that first part of the smart cover, it gives you the clue, and then you pull the rest of it up and it gives you whatever the answer is, and you can self-assess, yes or, you know, I got it correct or I got it incorrect. You close it, you open it again, and it gives you the next clue or the next flashcard. Um, and it's great for students, especially K-8, love it. Um, the teachers that I've worked with at least say that they love it. Um, so having everything in one place. So Skitch is also like Evernote Peak, where you sign in with your Evernote account to Skitch. Now, one of the most powerful things, I'm not going to show you now, but again, we can go into it later if you want. Um, I'll get us off AirPlay. Um, one of the um, most powerful things that I did with Skitch um, as an administrator have you ever done one of those things where you're like, oh, this takes me like five minutes and it's, it's a need that exists. I'm going to hurry up and do it because I have the skill set to be able to do it. But it's not that big of a deal. You pour hours and hours into a student or into a parent and you get very little gratification sometimes. But sometimes you do something very simple and you get tons of accolades for it. So this was my moment. With, um, with Skitch, uh, we were having really significant issues in our parking lot. How many of you have parents? that are perfect drivers. <laughs> yes, so I, surprisingly enough, had the same kind of situation. And we had your typical school parking lot where they come, you come in one way and you leave one way. That's it, or else, right. We, and our parents had a difficult time with this sometimes. Um, and so, and also children getting out of the cars themselves. I mean, that, that causes a significant safety issue at times. So what ended up happening is we had too many complaints and too many issues. So I went to Google Maps, I zoomed in on our parking lot, and I drew in Skitch nice little neat lines that were in pink, this is where you drive, and in hot green, this is where students can walk. A week later, so we put it up on our website, we sent it to all the parents, a week later the sheriff shows up and goes, this is fantastic. I saw it on your website. Can you do it for the whole district? I'm like, no, but I can show you. Um, and so, so it's one of those things that, that is so quick and easy, and it makes, even for the less tech-savvy tech individuals, makes them feel really empowered because you're annotating an image, and you're like, oh, I can do this. Um, OK. Why isn't it going? Uh-oh. Because it doesn't want to. It doesn't like me. because it's not active. <laughs> mm. uh, remember the Milk. Remember the Milk is um, my favorite to-do list on the face of the planet. How many of you get a real sense of gratification when you have a to-do list and there's a little checkbox? And you check that box. You're done with that thing. You may have added five things in the meantime, but you checked that box off. Good for you. Um, I, too, feel great gratification with checkboxes. Uh, Remember the Milk is my digital version of this. And not only that, but it has an entire list. All these little arrows refer to different things. You know, never get over this. Um, so right over here, it has a link to all of the completed items I've done. You want to talk about, you know, when you're like, oh, I'm not getting anything done. You can at least go there. But more importantly, the reason that's really important is because I would put everything in my Remember the Milk, including calling parents or meeting with teachers. And when I did that, when Johnny's mom called me and said, you haven't called me back, 
I could go back and refer to my completed list, and it would show me the date when I actually did, in fact, call Johnny. Now, this is on the honor system, of course. You shouldn't click things off that you haven't actually done yet, okay? Um, and you can create different tabs, different lists of different things. I have a particular list of notes that only refer to, um, they're, I call them Bert notes because my boss's name is Bert. And they are for all of the things that aren't, they don't necessitate a meeting or I don't want to bug him. I don't want to go into his office every five seconds and say, hey, I have a question about this or that. But we have weekly meetings. So I put everything in Bert notes and then I have a list and now he's gotten into the habit of going, okay, what does the cow say? Because it is in fact a cute little cow. It looks, you know, silly, but it's very robust. In addition to that, you can also prioritize. So you can say, so this red means that that's a highest priority. So there are three different colors, you prioritize. It also orders it automatically by date. You can put something in there in plain English and say something like, call Kyle by next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And it will say, call Kyle and it will automatically uh, give it a due date of, of next Tuesday. Of July 2nd. Of July 2nd, right. I can share task lists with people. So then you get into project management and we start sharing the lists and who's responsible for what. Um, and I can also link it up with my iCalendar or I can print it if I want to. Um, and the, the free version allows you, um, yes, there is a way to take notes regarding the parent phone calls because there is a place when you create a task that allows you to enter super, super granular information, like is there a website related to this, um, and what kinds of notes right. that go along. So there's like a notes box that you can put in there. And you can put different tags in there as well. Yeah, you can put one. different tags so that, so that if you want to search for, well, tell them your grocery list. So my grocery list, <laughs> I use this for my grocery list, and I'll put things, and I have tags as to which store I can get these items at. So I just put items in my grocery list and then I tag it with the store. Now there are some items that I can get at multiple stores. So if I walk into the grocery store, I just click on my tags for the grocery store and I can see everything that I need to do at the grocery store. If I'm going to Target, and there may be some things that are on the grocery, that are tagged grocery and Target, but if I go into, into Target, I can just hit all of those things at Target and then it just reduces the things that I have on my grocery list. Yeah, it's super powerful, and, and remember the milk is definitely my friend. Okay. Okay, so Google Apps. So Google Apps, a lot of stuff here, right? One of the things that I w really want to make the point of right now as, as we're kind of getting into this, all of the tools that Elizabeth and I are going to show you today are all cross-platform. It doesn't matter what kind of device you have. Oh, you know? oh, 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 I have one more thing about remember the milk. Okay. okay is that okay? Can I interject real quickly? I don't care if he says it okay. Is it okay with you guys? Because yes. you're my people, right? Um, you, I'm so sorry. Um, Remember the Milk allows you to sync once for free once every 24 hours. Uh -huh. When I first started using it, I did that for a week because I wanted to try it out. And then it's like $15 for a year mm -hmm. to sync automatically all the time. And one of the things that I loved most about it is that I was a very transient administrator as most administrators are and so it, transient in the sense that I'd be sitting at my desk and then I'd be out in a classroom and then I'd be out at the playground and I'd be all over the place but I had my phone and so I would pull up remember the milk and I'd go back and forth between my phone I could put something on my phone when I remembered it when I was out at the playground and it would still be on my desktop so when I came back I could see that and it was all right. synced together and it would sync automatically okay so, Google Apps. So, Google Drive. You know all the things that are in Google Drive right now. Now, you think about it, we all know the word processing tool, the spreadsheet tool, forms, the presentations tool. Also know that there's drawings there as well. Also know that you can use your Google Drive account as what? A drive. That you can upload drawings, you can upload video. One of the workarounds that you can use Google Drive for is that if you are in a district, anybody in a district where YouTube is blocked? Okay, so one of the workarounds that if you have Google Apps is that if you have a video, you can upload it to your Drive account and share it out that way. That is a different way to use Google Drive. Also, you have Google Calendar. There's a lot of power in Google Calendar. 
besides just the, the idea of having multiple calendars on one calendar, being able to share calendars with a variety of different people, being able to color code calendars, being able to download those calendars, having reminders for different events and in different ways. Know that you can have Google Calendar send you an email, send you a desktop notification, or even send you a text message. You can even set Google Calendar to send you an email every morning at 5 a.m. with the list of all of your events that day. Know that there are some other tools that we're going to talk about later on where you can actually set up Google Calendar to tweet for you. If you want to do some of those things, you have some events happening at your school, you can use another add-on tool, a third-party tool with Google Calendar, and it will tweet out events for you. Um, sites, if you haven't used Sites, it's probably one of the most powerful things in Google's arsenal because it's the thing that holds everything else. Right? You can pull in a doc and embed it. You can embed a form into a Google site. You can embed a calendar into a Google site. Um, you can take other things as long as you can get something in an iframe tag. I know that's getting a little geeky there. But if you can embed it into or get an iframe tag, you can put it into a Google site, which is really powerful as well. Blogger, to me, is the one tool that I am ju it just disappoints me that more people don't use because it is so powerful. Everybody thinks about, well, Blogger was just like so 1999, <laughs> right? And it was 1999. It was the first publishing tool. Google bought it in 2004. But there's some things in Blogger that are really powerful. Number one, I can take something from my Blogger feed and take the RSS feed from it and embed it right into my school's website. So if I'm the principal, I just write up a blog post and I hit send on the blog post. I can send it out to a mailing list, but I can also take that blog post and have it port right back into my school's website. So I do it one time and I don't have to bug the webmaster. Right? If I'm a teacher, and especially, how many elementary ed people do we have? A bunch. So you do that weekly newsletter home to the parents. If you do that in Blogger, you can embed now a Picasso slideshow. So pictures of what your kids are doing in class, and you can embed it right into that Blogger blog. You can embed a video, so if you do video in class. And now I'm waiting for that next question. Well, our parents really don't feel comfortable with, you know, our kids' images being seen on the web. With Blogger, you can control who can see your blog and who can't see your blog. So you can really limit the scope of who can and can't see your blog. You can also limit who can comment on your blog and who you can't, or who can't comment on your blog, or cut off comments altogether. Gmail, there's also a ton of power in Gmail. That you can you can do a deep dive, almost a full you know two or three hour session on Gmail. But there's some things right away. Filtering your email. If you have email coming from certain people, you want to put it into a certain inbox. You want to star messages. I know as an administrator, you see all these emails come in, and you say that's one that I have to answer, but I don't want it to fall to the bottom of my inbox and I lose it. I can put a star in it, and then all those things go into a separate inbox that I know I have to deal with when I have the time to deal with them more productively. And then YouTube. YouTube, there's some great power in YouTube, and you can actually set up playlists. So if you want to have something, if you're going to do one of the sessions that Elizabeth and I are going to do later on during this conference is a session called Flip PD that is on tomorrow or Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday. And you can set up playlists for your teachers to do your PD in a flipped model so they watch content before they come to the, to the faculty meeting and then you can spend that time in your faculty meeting much, being much more productive. And then the other piece with YouTube is you can also control who can and who can't see. Okay. Dropbox and we're back over to Elizabeth. Dropbox. So um, a lot of you were saying earlier um, you heart Dropbox. Uh, so, so let's get a little bit of feedback from, from you guys. Why do you, why do you heart Dropbox? Yeah. Right. 
And, and that's the piece that we're trying to go for. What are those tools that sink across everything? Because I am so tired of this platform argument. Um, why else do you like Dropbox? Yeah. All the stuff, all the school schedules, all the emergency plans, all of that paper that just consumes. It consumes time, it consumes finances. Absolutely. She was just saying, if you didn't hear back, that she, um, that her school site, the whole school faculty went paperless as a result of using Dropbox. Uh, the thing that I really like about it as well is that it doesn't have to be a particular file format. It can be pictures, it can be video, it can be uh, anything, and you can dump it in there. And I also like the ability to share particular folders. Um, as somebody who's doing a lot of PD, I like to be able, I, I have this whole Common Core series that I, that I do sometimes with schools, and when I do that, I have folders that I'm able to share with them, and it doesn't matter if they're a Google Apps district, it doesn't matter what kind of skill set really that they have, I can say, let me know if you want this particular folder shared with you, and then I share it with them and it's yay. Um, and, and they have access to all of those videos and files as well. Um, so, so that's definitely a, a bonus. Um, and the fact that it's sort of a shameless, um, I, I, I really like the price model where you want more storage, you ask friends to join Dropbox, and you know if, if you're the first person at your school site to, to get a Dropbox, you're yeah you're set because then you send everybody your referral link, and then all of a sudden you get all of this storage, which is nice. You can be transparent about that. Um, so the next thing, how many of you have heard of Ed Canvas? Good. So not a ton of you. It's a really neat uh, newish. Uh, Startup, even still, I would. I would still can call them a startup. A startup. Um, so it's a different way of visualizing anything from lesson plans to curricular plans, and it's all in one shot. So we're used to Dropbox, where you've got folders, or even Google Drive that has folders, um, and everything, or even you know a site where you've got a website and you've got a whole bunch of resources on that website. What Ed Canvas is, is it's a series of different resources on one page that is of different formats. So this is a video, this is a link to a website, this is a document, this is an image, this is another type of document, and that's another type of website. So you can send people to this one site and get all of the information about that one topic that you're wanting to impart upon them or provide to them. Visually, it's appealing. Um, you can change, I mean, the, the way that I've structured this one, you have lots of different options in terms of the blocking, you know, which pictures are bigger, which are smaller, um, and they have a new uh, premium version which includes a whole bunch of other really cool features. Right. Um, it is integrated with uh, Google Apps, um, or your Google account. In fact, I'll give you just a real quick sneak peek at, at what it looks like um, on the back end. So, As you're doing I, that, also Ed Canvas is one of those tools that will go and embed right into a Google site. So you can build your Ed Canvas and it will... Or any other web. Or any other yeah. website. It has it, pulls out an inline frame. So you've got, you can search Google directly in here. So it's not like you have to pull it from another tab necessarily. I could search Google for periodic table and pull something and drag and drop it directly in. So anything from YouTube, same, same. I could search Flickr, I could search EduCreations, um, Guru, if you haven't looked into Guru Learning, that is a fascinating, really cool website or um, tool, oh, yeah. curation so, tool. You know we are, yeah. uh, inserting web pages directly, any sort of external file. It is integrated with Dropbox, Drive, um, a bookmark, and then you can actually create district resources if you have some other space that you're collecting district resources and you can integrate that with Ed Canvas. So um, it's deceivingly simple 
um, but streamlines that whole process uh, that takes seconds. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about skimming seconds. And as we know, seconds lead to minutes, lead to hours. And the more we can do that, where we don't have to go between multiple tabs to search for what we want and put it in a meaningful format and over and over again, that's pretty cool. I, I think it's pretty cool. Okay. You. That's you. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> Either or. Um, so social networking. Most of you, involved, we've already talked about Twitter, but some of you are now are involved in multiple social networks, right? You have your Twitter account, you have your Facebook account, you have your Google Plus account, and, and you have your Pinterest account. And so you have all of these multiple accounts. So one of the ways to streamline your workflow is to get some of these things working together. Right? Hootsuite and TweetDeck are both tools to allow you to publish to multiple social networks at the same time. So as you can get those things out, and the more information you get out to either your staff or your families is going to benefit you. Because we all know that not everybody is going to use the same thing. Not everybody is going to be on the same social network. Um, you can publish out to a Twitter feed that you have for your school. You can have multiple Twitter feeds. You can have multiple Twitter feeds for different events. I know that there are schools that will have a main Twitter feed for their school events and then another Twitter feed for their athletic events and you can post to both at the same time. One of the other benefits that you can with Hootsuite is you can actually link to different things and then push out. TweetDeck allows you to do the same thing. It also allows you to search different hashtags and search different um, your mentions in Twitter, etc. all on the same interface. It's basically all on one page. And it makes it a whole lot easier to manage that way. Is there anything else that we could add on that? Right. Okay. Anybody else want to add something? I mean, somebody, somebody said Hootsuite helps organize the chaos of Twitter. Yes, it does. Which is totally true. Yes, it does. Hootsuite definitely does that. And you can also add Facebook, Instagram, Foursquare yeah. feeds within Hootsuite. So. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Where are we next? <clears throat> oh. And then you want to come over here and do no, your um, in that? I'm just going to imagine because if they pick this in the deep dive, then I'll go further. Okay. All right. So IFTTT, this is a website. And this is kind of what I was talking about when I was up talking about Google Calendar and how can you get Google Calendar to tweet for you, right? So if this, then that, IFTTT, you create recipes and you say, if this happens, do this. Right? So Excellent. one of the very quick and easy recipes that I use all the time is, if I get an email from Google Calendar, send it to Twitter. If I get an email from Google Calendar, send it to Facebook. My Facebook page is for my school. Now, I put all those things on my calendar. I set up all those calendar events to do what? To send me an email reminder. I get that email reminder, what happens? It goes to Facebook, it goes to Twitter. And now I can take that Twitter feed or that Facebook feed and do what with it? Put it on the main page of my school's website or if I'm a teacher, onto my class website and it all works. So you can see all of these different, different recipes that are there. One, of, there. one of my favorites is um, if I favorite a tweet, it gets saved to my Digo list which is my social bookmarking. And so it's a real quick and easy way to be able to filter through all of the, all the Twitter great resources that I get. So as I'm going through that on, a, on any given weekend, I can just go to my Digo list and then pull out the ones that I've favorited that particular week or whenever. So you'll see, save start Gmails to Evernote. And there's a whole lot of recipes that are there that are already pre-built. It's a free account, and you just hook in all of your different accounts into If This Then That. Mm -hmm. And then it it's just runs Same. out those recipes. Right. It's a very cool and easy easy way to do different things. So, Or if you post a blogger, then yeah. an automatic tweet goes out. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to 
I don't have to tweet that. it out again. It does it automatically. I, anytime I hit send on my blog or blog, it tweets it out. It sends it out to my Facebook. So it's another way to get those things out to your community, get those things out to your students. Okay. Okay. All right. So now we have, we kind of gave you a lot, but if you go to the link, it's going to give you a list. So it's ISTE Streamline, or bit.ly slash ISTE Streamline. And I will put it. It is all lowercase. Yes. Um, was it somebody? Yes. You can also send a favorite tweet. It sends to Evernote. Yes, that is the system that I use as well with Evernote. Is that if you you set it up at myen and you respond to a tweet that way, it will send all those tweets to your Evernote account. So then the quiz that you're or the whatever you're going to. Um, Pick your top two or three, and we're going to give you exactly three minutes. Now you can resubmit as many times as you want. So you can start All right. the ballot box. So just go, 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 go. We're going to give you three minutes. Ready? Wait, wait. Uh, you got to turn it off. Oh, I've already given it to him. I'm giving him like an extra minute. It's pressure. Oh. There. There you go. Oh, that's not fun, though. Yeah, you gotta, I'm going to do it the other way. Yeah, you're going to have to give them two minutes, though. Do the countdown two minutes. There you go. You get two minutes. There I said go. three, Set. but I lied. There you go. So there you go. When no it pressure. Hits zero, There's the we're counter. Done. You're going to go over to the uh, that link, and that's how much time you have left to put as much in there as you want. You, you can, can go back and do go it again. Go back and do it again. We are encouraging productivity. <laughs> How many people do we have anybody from Chicago in the audience? We want people to vote like they do in Chicago early and often. <laughs> I'm glad you asked that before you <laughs> <laughs> There was one person. Did they laugh? They, I hope the person from <laughs> Chicago over here laughed. Being a, there you go. <laughs> That's the old social science teacher coming out of me. We should have used that tune as the. Yeah, that little. We also we should have had the Jeopardy theme rolling too. I know, but okay, thirty seconds here. Oh, you got to get in there. You got to cut it off. Down, what, but, where are we? There you go. No, down one mark. There you go. I, I got it. Okay, it's shut down. Okay. Oh. All right. So, and you oh, it's automatically. Oh, yeah. Happened automatically. Now, tools. No. Oh, it's uh, data. data. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, where'd it go? Pardon? This is this is uh, Google Forms. Thank you. Yeah. No. That's not where it is anymore. You need to, you need to go to the. You need to go to. <laughs> Do I need to? You need to. Go I need to, to go to the form. You need to go to the form. That's crazy. Yeah. So you have to. There you go. Yes. There, and then you have to. There you go, and then show summary responses. There you go. Okie dokie. All right. So. Looks like Evernote and, ooh, Skitch and Ed Canvas are tied for, oh, no, but, but if you look at raw numbers, 
Ed Canvas just squeaked out Skitch. So, Evernote okay. and Ed Canvas. Okay. You want to do Evernote? Sure. All right. Okay. Do you want to use my account? You want to sure. use the iPad? You want to use, what do you want to use? Yeah. So, I will do this. What do you want to what do you want to learn more about with Evernote? Just shout out. All of it? Any of it? Workflow with faculty? Is that what you said? Yeah, because it's note it's a note taking app. It's a note taking app. I mean, in its essence, if you frame it like that as this is a note taking app and we can just take them through. I mean, the way that I do it when I'm first working with, with staffs on Evernote, and usually it's within the context of, you need to project it. Oh, um, I thought I did. The, the way that I frame it um, with, with teachers is that I start, um, usually it's in an iPad training, and Evernote is one of the first apps that I share with them. And uh, I show them the ability to, um, take a picture directly from the app itself and upload that um, and then it gets attached. There you go, it's up. Okay. Uh, and, and then the audio files. And they, they really, really like the audio files. Staff tends, teachers really like being able to audio record, especially if they're in a tenuous situation and, and they feel like you know, maybe the administrator can't be there for a meeting that they're having with a parent or something like that, and they, they just want to be able to, to have some extra protection um, or feel comfortable. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but that's... Okay. So this is the basic interface that you're going to find in Evernote. And you'll see on the, on the, on the far left... For the side, iPad. Or on the iPad. Um, on the far left hand side you'll see that you can you can add a new note. Uh oh, that's all right. And then in the top you'll see that you have the ability to take a picture. So I can actually There's your finger. Yeah, my finger. I got a <laughs> Well, there's a picture that I just took of everyone. That One will Oh. One of the ways that I used Evernote also with staffs is when we would do walkthroughs. Mm -hmm. um, and I would have, I, I would take my notes in Evernote, take pictures of what's on the wall, take pictures, take video of what's happening in the class. And then you start to have a conversation that's centered not just around what my notes are, but what was actually seen. And look, here's the evidence. Now you can reflect upon that and, and not not necessarily as part of the formal, depending on what your evaluation procedures are, but not necessarily part of the formal evaluation, but it's, it was a powerful way for teachers to be able to, to reflect upon the practice, the notes, what you had seen, what you had heard before they even come into the conversation. Now you have something from which to talk about rather than here's what I saw, here's what, you know, and then it's, well, that's not what I felt I did. Or, you know, sometimes I, sometimes you've got the teachers who are just, you know, saying, I did a terrible job, it was awful, it was awful, and you're like, no, look, when you went to this student, you know, all of the other students were totally engaged. And so, you know, it works both ways. Okay, so I don't know if anybody kind of caught what I did. It was I was able to take from my camera roll and embed a picture right into that Evernote note. And then I can now have the cursor up and I can have all of the flexibility that I would have in a standard word processor. So you can see I can do the bold, italic, underline, strike through. Um, I can also push those out. I can change the paragraphs and, and the indentations as well and go back and forth. So that's one of the things I can do. I can also... One, I'm just going to interrupt again. Okay. Because, you know... <laughs> um, when, if you allow Evernote to do this, it can automatically sync with your calendar. And remember when I said we're, we're talking about slimming seconds off? Um, when you create a new note, it can identify where you are and what you're doing according to your calendar and auto name it. So note at 
ISTE conference. If that were in my calendar, then that's what it would have shown up as. Yes. Um, so you can see here, this is the basic interface. You have all notes. You, ha you can see that now Elizabeth has several notebooks that she has from conferences in different years. That there's certain tags if she has things that are tagged different ways. That's a different way you can search within ne Evernote. Just like we mentioned uh, the way that I did my grocery list in Remember the Milk. You can do the same thing with Evernote notes. You can tag them different things. And then search on those tags within Evernote and it will bring all of those up. Um, the other thing that I want to get into because I, I want to show some stuff that's a, a little bit cooler is Skitch. So you can see that Evernote's here, but then in the lower right-hand corner I have an app called Skitch that is part of Evernote. And it will save all of your Skitch documents into Evernote. Elizabeth mentioned it when she was talking about that she took the picture from Google Maps and then drew the lines in for the traffic patterns at her school. So one of the things that you can do in Skitch, so here's Skitch. And I'm going to, you see the options that I have. I can take a photo, choose a photo, create it from a PDF, draw on a map, start with the blank or capture. So he already took web. a photo of you the first time. That was like the practice run. Yeah. Now. So I'm going to take one of you right now. Get ready. So right there, smile one, two, three. <laughs> and you can see right here, here we go. I'm going to use this one. And sorry, gentlemen, in the first row, I, I've got to um, kind of bring you out here and. Be nice. Okay. Okay. I don't think you're 100% engaged. <laughs> um, maybe he is. Maybe he's maybe totally he is, engrossed. He is totally into engaged. Meet. But, you he know, we've got everybody judge. here. There you go. That's he's creating right. his Evernote <laughs> account. And then I can come over here and say, there's the door. And do all of those things. I can, you know, I can put little, put little raindrops here all over the place. I can also type here and then type on the picture. Yeah, that's the one that's going to go to the district <laughs> office. And then I can save that, and it saves it for me automatically in my Evernote account. So if I were to go back to my Evernote account, it will say. No, well, you can crop it from here, but you can also um, you can take it from Evernote and put it into the camera roll. Doesn't automatically go. Yeah, the, the actual picture does, but not the, the things that I put on top. Right. The other thing that is, is kind of cool with Skitch is, and this is one of the real big tools as I'm using it in classes, there may be a time where you want to hide a student's face. Right? It has a blur tool. So this tool that's a little, it's the third one up from the bottom on the right-hand side here is the blur tool. So I'm sorry, sir, I'm going to blur your face out here. So I'm going to sit there and I'm going to blur out his face. Okay. <laughs> Wait, don't, don't go anywhere. He's taking a picture. <laughs> okay. The other thing I can do is I can put little tags on. And it goes like that. And then I can actually annotate it there. Whoop, sorry, Kyle. This is important. Are we out of time? No, 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 no. You're fine. I'm just trying to help okay. somewhere else. All right. So I can put little tags here that say this is important, and I can do all those kind of things. That is Skitch. There's tons more things you can do with Skitch, but I want to kind of move on to the other parts of Evernote. All right. So the other one that Elizabeth talked about is the second one from the right on the upper level, which is Peak. So this is Evernote Peak, and it's a, basically a... Um, uh, flashcard maker. So you'll say here, state nicknames. Oh, I can't believe it should be. Nope, it's not. French words. Okay. We all, we, French. Aren't yeah. we wanting to learn French? Well, it's going to load here just a second. Oh, it's going to come up here. I thought I had it downloaded already. Because I've used it before. Okay. All right, so here's state nicknames, closest to my, but I have over here, and this is one of the things as Elizabeth was telling you about the first time, if you don't have one of those smart covers, you have a virtual smart cover in the upper right-hand corner. So you'll see here that I pull it all the way down, and there's my virtual smart cover. And I push it up the first time, and it gives me the volunteer state. So what's the volunteer state? Tennessee. Tennessee. And there it is. And then I push it up again, and I can assess myself. I can make it correct, and then 
Oh, no, correct. And then pull it back down again. Come on. Here we go. And then. No, oh, come on. No, it's no. on. It's a regular feature that you can. Oh, there we go. Ooh, ooh, South Carolina. Yeah, there you go. We did this. We did this uh, state capitals or the this one before, and and I was like, I was sure I was going to stump him. I'm like, and okay. I went through every single one. And Great Lakes State them. is Michigan. Oh. Yeah, it's that the virtual cover. All right, so cover. what we do in presentation land when things aren't working well is we go to the next topic. We go to the next thing. All right. Um, the other piece of Evernote that I want to show you is a tool that is the one in the lower uh, left-hand side. It's a thing called Penultimate. And now I actually did some notes on a book I was reading, culture, or, uh, Leadership in a Culture of Change. So I just kind of did my notes here and I can just write those notes out. The thing that is cool about them is that now I can actually search the notes that are in my handwriting. It's not perfect, but it does a pretty good job. So showing. you'll see here I've used it, oh, it didn't go to the next page? No. Why not? Darn it. If you do the search, does it bring up the search? It doesn't mean bring up the search. I'm kind of stuck here. So let me see if I can disengage here and re-engage. So if you just type in leadership, it pulls up everything yeah. that you have the word leadership Ship in. in and it puts the... squares around it. It basically puts squares. So I typed in the word change. And every place I had the word change in that document, it put a square around it. So okay, I need to go on to Ed Canvas. OK. Okay. Hey, do we want the do we want to show them the best of all best videos by the end of this session? Yes, we do. Okay. okay. All right. So, Ed Canvas. Uh, let me get back there. Okay. So this is this is how you create an Ed Canvas. You create an account on Ed Canvas, and on the left hand side, you can create a new canvas, and it works. There we go. Um, I can enter the streamlining, and then I can search for um, anything. So if I want to search for Evernote, and I'm in the YouTube tab over here, here's Evernote tips, the 11 features that make using Evernote so freaking awesome. And I can throw it wherever I want to place it, literally drag and drop. I can add more rows if I want to add more rows. I can also come over here and click on templates. So this is where I can choose if I want a grid or bars or any sort of mosaic. I can also choose if I want it to be dark or I want to have different colors. And then as I search, here's, a, here's an image of Evernote. Um, I can also go down to here and because this is hopefully linked with my Google Drive um, then I can go in and, and pull all of hopefully my ISTE the ISTE presentation so if it were up here then I could pull it and drag and drop it in uh, it's not here's some workflow so these were some of our notes that we took um, and here we go. So we can put the presentation itself. That's digital literacy. Streamline your workflow. And there's the slide deck itself. So we could have put all of this stuff into just one single Ed Canvas. At that point, when I'm done, I can click on share. I can choose my privacy, who can view it, only me, anyone, or only people with a link, and my students. So you can create classes and create lists of students within those classes, or you can create staff lists, however you want to organize it. You can also collaborate and add co-authors and or just provide a link for collaborators. Um, 
I have five minutes left, and so this is kind of the upshot of, of what you can do, and um, it's really just a super powerful tool. Um, with that, I want to make sure that we're being thoughtful of time because there's nothing more annoying than going over time. Um, and we're going to show you the quintessential uh, workflow time saver. So if nothing here uh, saved any time in your life, we do want to show you this particular video, which should show you t save an enormous amount of time. We guarantee this one two-minute video will save you time. Okay. Unless they already do this. Unless they already do this. This so, will save you time. So how many of you have ever cooked corn before? Corn on the cob. All right. For me, I've always cooked corn. You throw it into a pot of boiling water and takes as much time as it takes to, or you put it on the barbecue or you do a lot of different things with it. This is how I was raised, okay, don't judge, to do <laughs> corn. Um, and then this last summer, I saw this video. Sorry about the audio. <laughs> Folks, you ever wanted good, fresh corn on the cob without all the hassle? Let me show you how to do it. You first take field run corn, that is untrimmed, and when you microwave it four minutes for each year, it'll come out. When we peel it, it will have no silk whatsoever on it. Be ready to eat. So here we go. Two liters will be a total of about eight minutes. Here we go. As you can see, I have removed the corn from the microwave with my old gloves, which work mighty nice. Now I'm going to lay this on the cutting board. Be sure to cut all of the husks. That's what it should look like when you have made the cut. Then grab the husk, the silks, give a shake. There it comes out. No silk whatsoever, no husk. Simple as that. Show you again. Here we go. Make the cut. Make sure you cut all of the husks. And like, and like any good again, teacher, he's going to show you again. Like. Just in right. case, you know, first you time we were like, whoa. So, second time, it's like, wait, two shakes, again. Three shakes, maybe. <laughs> Turn loose. And that's the most time I've ever seen. Oh, there it goes. Clean as a whistle. Took a little time. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> now, what we'll tell you is, after Elizabeth saw this video, we had corn on the cob probably every night for two weeks. <laughs> no joke. Just because it was so easy, easy to do. All right. The evaluation is on slide 17. Uh, we have some other resources under more resources where you can find uh, some information about frictionless sharing, a demo high school Google site that Kyle set up, step-by-step uh, -step resources for Chrome, make use of these great cheat sheets that exist that are one page, shortcuts for all sorts of different applications, the science of productivity, a great site if you want to see Ken Sheck and Corn again, and this fantastic TED Talk on the art of stress free productivity. With that, we hope you have a wonderful oh, rest of your time contact information. at ISTE. Yeah, and then our contact information. So um, there's us. Yay. Um, and if you have any questions, we'll be around. But please, please understand that um, because these are ticketed sessions, there's another group that's going to be coming in. So um, if you want to hang out, we can hang out outside. We're going to pack up and we're going to move our stuff outside. So um, thank you very right. much. Yes. Yeah. Thank